Uh, the meeting of the Milburn Shore Hills Business Organization Incorporated is called to order. Today is Thursday, December 14th, 2023, 6.30 p.m. I'll read the Sunshine Compliance Statement. Notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner, pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice was posted in town hall and the township's website by notifications and newspapers on December 27th, 2022 for the schedule for 2023 and by providing notice to the township clerk. Hello, Tracy. Tracy is here. I'm gonna let Tracy get settled. Is this also on Zoom? Yes. Oh, is anybody participating? We have two participants, two attendees. Okay. To come from Tracy. If we can uh, join me in the salute to the flag. Tracy. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are you good? I am. Um, roll call first. Oh, okay. Got it. My apologies. I'm always doing the, no, the work no to explore run. <laughs> um, Alexa Clark is, she is Alexa. not here. Uh, Tracy Katzelbein, I am present. Um, Tim Hoffman. 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 Okay. Hard to be here. Welcome. <laughs> and great to meet you. Michael Parlovecchio. Here. Annette Romano. Here. Ashley Schultz. Absent. Is absent. Richard Wasserman. Here. Stephen Weiner. Here. And Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. I know she is here and I saw her on the way. <coughs> Thank you, Tracy. <coughs> SID mission statement is the purpose of a special improvement district is to provide, uh, is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Milburn Township SID ordinance designates a new district management corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Milburn Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure and local business development and engagement. Now we have minutes, Tracy. Okay. Um, I had distributed the minutes for November 16th, 2023. Did anybody have any questions on those? Is there a motion to approve? So a motion. Second. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, we have a special presentation. Let's start here. We have the introduction, the gentleman we've all just met, our new Aye. assistant business administrator, Tim Hoffman. Tim, you want to say hello? We're happy to have you here in the in the, uh, in the hot seat over there? That's yes. good. You're at the controls at the switchboard. It's nice to meet everybody. How when did you start, Tim? Uh, Monday. So uh, this is tonight, uh, tonight's uh, day four. So, <laughs> well, welcome. A lot, and I, I really look forward to working with everybody. Perfect. Welcome. You're just a deep one. You're still here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In a related note, I ran into Jesse in his new oh, in his new environment, and he's doing really well. Family, we saw Jesse last week at the holiday party. Yes, yes, he's doing great. Yes, so he sends his regards. He misses our board. He says, "Okay, I'm not doing this I, next one gonna, because I, it feels I, a little awkward." Yeah, that's right. Grabbing the mic. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, unfortunately, uh, tonight is Michael's uh, final board meeting as chairman, and. Um, I, I just wanted to share that uh, he, he's really one of the few remaining original board members from when we uh, were forming Explore. And um, I know I've always valued Michael's keen insight and experience, right? And I, I always wanna say like seasoned and tempered questions and judgment as we were really standing up Explore, figuring out what our tactical game plan is to support Milburn businesses. And, and Michael was just kind of an anchor for me, uh, you know, coming in, um, I think you're, practice actually, you know, with municipals and municipalities and things, which I 
do not have that exact background, but um, I, I, I know I, for one, will certainly miss you. Uh, camaraderie, your season, like I said, season judgment. I'm not, uh, we will not be the same without you. And I really hope that we'll see you sitting out here um, and we'll be sure to give you your three minutes <laughs> of, of comment. Um, but um, yeah, congratulations. It's, it was really been a great run Thanks. working with you. Yeah, Michael, I, I also want to thank you and congratulate you on a, an incredible term. Oh, I also want to thank you and congratulate you on an incredible uh, term uh, when, and I'll speak, you know, for myself and uh, maybe Jack wants to say something, but when we were setting up this organization and um, when we, and our top assignment was to bring in great people. Um, you know, you were you were at the top of our list because we needed a, a steady hand. We needed a great leadership, and um, you know, and uh, and you were all of the above. And I just want to thank you personally for helping us. I'm gonna say you you and Jackie who got me here. <laughs> I hope you have no regrets. No. <laughs> and uh, I just want to add your your vision, your leadership. Um, your knowledge of municipalities and regulation and law um, has proven to be very, very valuable. And, uh, and you've been true to our mission. So I, I, I and your presence uh, will be indeed missed, but um, we will see you in town. <laughs> Thank you. We've been friends for a very long time, and I finally had the opportunity to work with you this past year on the SID, and, um, you know, what everyone else said, uh, thank you for your leadership and getting this board and the SID off the ground, and um, we will definitely be calling on you when we need to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just add my thanks. Um, it's really, Michael, been a pleasure working with you. I really appreciate your leadership and also your personal guidance to me. And I always say Michael is a great, very knowledgeable voice of reason. And um, he can now just come to explore events as a guest and enjoy it. And, uh, and I carry wood. Really, Thank you. We really, our organization would not be what it is without your involvement and leadership from the start. Thank you. Well, I can say really quickly, it has not, I have no regrets. Thank you, Jackie and Richard, for <laughs> recommending me at the time. Yeah, I think um, Steve may have some. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 We'll still give you your time. No, I don't. <laughs> um, I, I just want to thank you for welcoming me from the start and the support for all of the things that we have done. We've done a lot of new concepts and and you've been behind us and you've also been there helping carry wood and stoke fires. And um, so thank you. Uh, it's, it's really been wonderful. Um, but I do wish you luck in your next chapter. I wrote a whole paragraph, but <laughs> what it comes down to, it's um, truly, I think there's been dozens of times literally where I've said, because I'm the first point, right? Whatever craziness happens, I hear it. And then Michael gets the inevitable phone call. Um, and I've always said to myself, how would Michael handle this? So you've always been a benchmark of how we should be going about our business. And I think that's an incredible thing for a chairman to be. Um, you've set a really, really high standard for this organization's professionalism. Um, it starts at the top and, and it's been a wonderful experience with you. So we have something for you. So this was wrapped as part of the Jesus Nunez paper ribbon and wrap uh, yes. wrapping program that's going on. So we, we supported local uh, <laughs> Milburn. The entire Carmel. thing is local. The photo and the frame were produced by uh, Carl Mink over at uh, Milburn ASAP Camera. Yeah. Please. Yeah. And uh, it was wrapped by a uh, paper ribbon and wrap and Jay Nunez Gallery, who have a, uh, a special wrapping program going on. Yeah, for the it's a wrap for a cause. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the three lumberjacks. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> 
Great picture. My branded structure. Look at that. Which we're going to need back at the end of your tenure. <laughs> Not to belabor, but thank you all very much. It's been really uh, a pleasure and I hope uh, I've been able to lend something to this organization and, and to the town. Uh, I really do enjoy being a volunteer here and it's, uh, it's rewarding. I find it very, very rewarding. Thank you. But on to business. Thank you. Uh, treasurer's report, Stephen. Yes. Okay, very briefly, uh, attach as attachment two to the to the packet. You'll see the expenses through November 30 of this year. Just want to highlight a couple items that uh, the bank balance as of November 30 was $53,707. We always like to update that. So as of December 6, it actually was 36,112 as uh, some invoices were paid out. Um, as far as of today, the fraudulent check has not yet been repaid, but we do. Ex it is within the time period we expect it to come in sometime this month. Um, and lastly, just at the bottom of the, of the of the summary, is we're still estimating at the end of the year, which is rapidly approaching, uh, to have a bank balance of about twenty five thousand dollars. That's after the payment of some additional invoices and, and other items. Um, one other, I guess, the next. Well, I gave you the update on check, check fraud incident. Uh, the 2024 budget status, our budget was passed at the township committee on November 21st and the final vote and public hearing will be next Tuesday, December 19th. So I encourage everybody uh, to attend that meeting if you're able to. And, and just as a note in terms of operations for next year, um, if the budget is passed, obviously we will be uh, able to receive 26% of the 55,000 or so that is owed to us by the town, that's separate from the assessment. Um, and so that comes out to about 14,300 that will go into the bank uh, fairly early on in January. So, um, you know, we, with the 8,000 missing, that gets us to about 33, another 14. So um, we should be in, in fine shape for Q1. Yeah, it's always that precarious uh, yeah, That's uh, the shit. tough time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. That's all. Any, oh, any questions? Okay, thanks, Stephen. Uh, Amanda, marketing and events report. Okay, I have a lot. I'm going to try and go as fast as possible. Um, okay, so first up, Small Business Saturday. So um, from our um, fall advisory committee meeting, we discussed, you know, what would benefit the businesses the most around Small Business Saturday, and the overwhelming. Um, uh, answer was they wanted digital social media um, promotions. They weren't as concerned as in-person things happening in town. So we did a two-week um, campaign and businesses at over 30 businesses sending, whether it's promotions, holiday events, um, you know, whether they have, uh, you know, Hanukkah or Christmas um, menus, you name it. Um, and then that was over 65 different promotions that were sent. So we, I posted them on a daily basis, whatever I've received. Um, and so I, I think we're happy with how it turned out. I still wanna do some follow-up with businesses that participated to see you know, if they feel it made it made it a dent with them. Um, we did that and then we did have some businesses that still wanted to have some type of presence in town. So we had the Manhattan Carolers come back and they did the whole downtown on Small Business Saturday. Crazy Kevin um, was a uh, giant toy soldier that was dancing and juggling on stilts on Mars Turnpike and at Short Hill Station. And then we had DJ Jason Jay that we've been working with for, I guess, almost two years. Um, he set up shop at the Bagel Pantry on um, Upper Milburn Ave. So um, I, I think that went well. We I walked around with um, the carolers and going into stores, people just love it. it, it it's so much fun. So, so that was the Small Business Saturday kind of um, giving Tuesday weekend. Um, I went over the entertainment. Um, any questions about Small Business Saturday? So moving on to the Winter Villages, this is the big one. Um, just as a, a quick repeat, uh, they were scheduled for December 2nd and 3rd in the downtown and December 9th and 10th at Short Hill Station. 
due to inclement weather, we had to cancel December 3rd, Sunday, December 3rd, as well as Sunday, December 10th. Um, but we still had an overwhelming amount of people attend and I'll get to that. I do wanna mention the changes and expansions we made this year versus last year. We added another igloos, we had five igloos. We added another fire pits, we had four fire pits. Um, additional decorations, we had sponsors this year. All five igloos have sponsors. Um, and uh, a few of the sponsors actually set up tables that was Curious Kids and Evan Footer. And then Jack Surf and Turf, he um, provided free Manhattan clam chowder, lobster bisque, New England clam chowder, and people just went nuts for it. Um, it was really great. And then on the ninth, he also sold hot chocolate, which was very popular. Um, we did not pay for additional entertainment this year. Really didn't see the need for it. We have our own speaker system. So Steve was able to set that up with holiday music. Um, but we were able to get Solfege from the high school to come perform at Short Hill Station. So that was a nice touch. Um, and our hours this year were from five to nine. Last year, we had a long day. They were 12 to seven. Um, so I think we're going to end up somewhere in, in between both um, that works for all the families in the area. And um, I think that's it as far as changes. Um, we were really fortunate to have the Key Club give us a lot of volunteers. I had over 25 students reach out um, that wanted to give their time. So that really made a difference, especially with kind of expanding this. And um, so we're very grateful for that, for Nancy Trees for making that connection. Um, we also had a lot of businesses step in and volunteer. Um, T-Boy Chic, uh, Emily from Green Door Studio, Linda's Florist, David uh, Lee Law Firm, The Standard, um, whether it was sending out staff or um, helping put together a fire pit, people were just willing to jump in. Or decorating the trees. Or decorating the trees, right. Um, so that was really nice. Um, and then the sponsors, we raised $5,250 in cash and $1,000 in in-kind donations. Um, and just a quick review, Garden Communities and the Metropolitan, uh, they were our event sponsors and they've been phenomenal to work with. Um, Splurge Bakery was our s'mores sponsor. And then the Igloo sponsors, um, two of them are businesses that haven't opened yet. Um, Sugaring NYC is coming uh, in 2024 as well as Curious Kids. Um, and then Linda's Florist, Live Breads and the Footer Financial Group um, Evan Footer is a new resident here, and so he um, he's really enjoyed being becoming part of the community, and this was another way for him to get to know um, residents. He gave out goodie bags and uh, uh, glow sticks. The kids love that. <laughs> so um, so it was really a well supported event. Marketing wise, we had the full page in Edible New Jersey. Um, we utilized the patch. Um, I'll. I'll go over and just see. So each one of the days of the event counts as an event with the patch. And so I had four separate promotions going. I had Milburn, Short Hills in each one. And then I experimented with the other communities to see if we can get people coming from other areas. So, you know, one day I did uh, Summit, Springfield, Livingston, Chatham, kind of some of the locals. And then another day I did, you know, Brooklyn, Hoboken, Morristown, Montclair, just to see what we're going to get. Um, the total amount of impressions from all four of these promotions was uh, 1,319,738. What does that mean exactly? People that saw or could have seen our, our event. And the average per event was... 329,935. So well worth it with the patch. Um, I'm sure a lot of you get those emails. So we're included in those. Um, moving on, uh, explore, well, I'll get back to explore social. We had the banner on Essex Street. Um, our posters went out to approximately 200 storefronts. We had Jessica Chews, who's worked with us at Restaurant Week, Girls Night Out. She did a, um, yes. Yeah, social media influencer. Um, she's not so famous that everybody knows who okay, she is. Okay, well, she's just lovely. She um, she actually works at Sotheby's on um, Upper Milburn Ave. And um, she came, we hired her to come to the first weekend to, to help promote the next weekend. So she had live, you know, real content. And her uh, reel has had up till today, 
42,500 um, views, 807 likes and 20 comments. Um, and she's, she's just tremendous to work with. She, we were also connecting her with some of the other businesses in town that may want to utilize her services. Um, and also the emails we sent out about the, um, the winter villages, um, over 50% of those were opened. Um, the average opens were 1,327 of our 2,604 subscribers. And um, Steve pulled a lot of Instagram stats. Um, so I'll go through those quickly. Big on the gram. <laughs> it's one form of marketing. Um, November 14th to December 13th. We had 5,958 accounts reached, which was up 51% from the previous month. Uh, we engaged 564 accounts, which was also up 125% from the previous month. Total followers incre increased uh, by 3% and we went over a 3,000 mark. Okay. So um, uh, let's see. We also shared 483 individual um, posts, whether it's people's reels or stories, things like that. And um, the average reel hits for the Winter Villages was 14, was 1,460 accounts. Um, post interactions were up 91%. Content interactions were up 204%. And reel interactions were um, up 225%. So that's just Instagram. And uh, let me just see here if I'm missing. I think that those are those totals. Um, so that's marketing. Did I miss anything? I think so. Um, any covered. questions? If you're scrolling, if you're scrolling on Instagram and you don't stop to play it, does that still add into your metrics? No. So you have to actually. Yeah, there's like terminology there between people that view it, right? So you've actually watched it and then engagement with it. So that could be sharing it, liking it, whatever that would be. Um, so attendance, any other questions? What was okay. the, I have one question. <clears throat> at the Shore Hills train station event, mm -hmm. what was the attendance at that event? It's I, funny you should have. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we believe it was more than downtown. Um, the total yeah, it was it was packed. It was um, standing room only. Yes, and you couldn't and you couldn't walk. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. Uh, you think that was like seven hundred? So we believe between the two events, um, according to the materials used and the surveys we have, which I'll go over, um, that we had between sixteen hundred and seventeen hundred combined the two days that we were wow. open. And that was two days, not four. That was right. two days, not four. Wow. So that was an increase. We had about five hundred a day last year. So. Um, Short Hill Station was absolutely packed. Um, we collected this year, we we're trying to just get more information from people as to how they heard about us, where they live. So on um, December 2nd, we didn't have a lot of volunteers to collect the information, so we just didn't collect as much. Um, but we had plenty of volunteers on the 9th, and so we were able to just greet people, hello, you know, and, and get that. Um, 234 surveys were collected in total. 55 unique towns were represented. So that's right up in our averages. Um, 129, 55% uh, of the attendees were from Mil Milburn Short Hills. 22.2% um, from surrounding towns. 22.6% from non-surrounding towns. 45%, 19.25% uh, were first time visitors to Milburn Short Hills. So that's <laughs> what we wanna hear. Um, and the, and the resident and engagement. I think you might switch numbers. Sorry? 19% were first. Oh, sorry. 19%. Excuse me. 19% is the first time they'd ever been to Milburn Short Hills. Okay, almost 20%. Um, One in five. Yeah. That's no joke. <laughs> yep. Um, and then as far as how they heard about it, 14.5%. Uh, Facebook, 22.6%. Instagram, 25.2%. Word of mouth. And that's of 62% people that responded with how they heard about us. Not everyone answers every question. Anything you want to add to that? No, perfect. So we were really happy with collecting that data. Yeah, yeah and I can just anecdotally, <laughs> I, I, I was talking to people from Livingston and they came to have dinner and then enjoy, that That was the downtown. Yeah, the whole point is like we're bringing these people in, but they are eating here. They're, they're kind of, 
using our businesses. Uh, and so that's great. And, and yeah, and they want, they were going to come back. They were surprised at how many rest, this particular family yeah. I was talking about was surprised about how many restaurant choices that we offered. Yeah. And they, I don't know where they chose, but then it was the exact target of, of, of you know, who, who we were trying to bring in. So it was, yeah, it was good. It was also nice to see returning faces. I recognized some kids from last year. I had a, a couple that I offered to take their picture and she was like, text me. And I went and I'm like, have we done this before? <laughs> I did the same thing for them last year. So it was really funny. Um, yeah, so that's. That's kind of the report on the winter villages. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Yeah, there were tons of kids. I mean, I, I I was actually a little surprised because when I was at the Short Hills Train Station, I just couldn't believe how many young kids were there. And uh, and I think that's uh, that's a good thing for us to keep in mind for future events. Try to keep some of it kid centric because the parents were were just trying to keep the kids <laughs> busy. But uh, but it, I mean. Dozens and dozens of kids, which was nice to see. Just thank you for all the work to make it all happen. It was yes. really, there was just a lot of positivity and energy and exactly what we were hoping for. And it was said also engaging about Milburn Shore Hills, everyone was getting their postcards and mm -hmm. encouraged to check out businesses. And yeah, loved the sponsors. Mm -hmm. And the Key Club volunteers were terrific. Really mm -hmm. glad that came together. So yes. we should definitely like tap oh, into that. For oh. everything. It's such a natural. <laughs> yeah, it's it such a natural. It was. It was it's exactly how, how to do this without them before. I don't know. So that was great. So thank you, thank you. I also want to say, but compared to last year, I, I don't know what the numbers are in terms of, you know, the dollar spend, but by having the system, we didn't have to pay for music. You didn't need the ice cutter or, you know, so, right. so I think uh, from a, from a financial standpoint, it seems to me that we got a lot of bang, we got, a, you know, the soup donated, the hot chocolate donated, the s'mores sponsor. Yeah, we, uh, so we, we, we purchased I, um, easier to set up tents. Um, so that was an expense, but it also was an efficiency measure. Right. Yeah. So we went oh, from spending sure. two hours a tent to 30 minutes a tent. Right. right. Um, yeah. Eliminating some things that might have been a little superfluous. Buying our own sound system a year ago for 250 bucks has yeah. saved us probably $2,000. Right. Um, so, and then the sponsors this year. Yeah. Um, that was a huge ad. So I think, you know, th this was just... It was terrific from a financial perspective. We made a lot of really good financial decisions on this one. Yeah. And I, I didn't mean to forget, but I know several board members were there to help us, whether it was collecting survey data, lugging firewood, um, putting together penguin lights. Uh, I will never, <laughs> never ask again. Jenny to do that again. Um, but, you know, everything helps. So thank you. Um, all right, moving on to um, Milburn Short Hills Magazine. Let me grab my notes. So um, this is a new magazine coming out in January. It's Milburn Short Hills month. It's going to be monthly uh, magazine. It's just about um, Milburn Short Hills. It's not about anyone else. And it's a lifestyle magazine. Um, the company that owns them is NJ Home Magazine. And they have several other publications in Northern and Central Jersey. Um, we are gonna have a feature every month um, from Explore. Steve's already written that one, um, which is gonna be great. And uh, some of the other features that are happening in the January, the first edition, uh, Paper Mill Playhouse is gonna be featured, Common Lot, Milburn School System. There's an interview with Dr. Burton, um, Emily from Green Door Studio. Q&A with um, the Milburn Library and then the Ganella team as well. Um, and it's going to be going to approximately 3,500 households and several hundred businesses to start. Um, yeah, I think I think that's it, but it seems like it's gonna be a really nice partnership. It's a paper magazine, right? Yes. Do, do you know if they also have a website where we can link to it? Yeah, so they, they will. I don't know if I'd promise that it'll be ready for the January publication, but they will. Um, this is also a free partnership. Um, so it's no cost to us and we will get that. They're calling it About Town. Um, and so for the first edition, I wrote about the Winter Villages. I wrote a preview of Restaurant Week. Um, and then we talked about um, Paper Mill Playoffs. Yes, one of Paper Mill's, uh, the new show that's coming out. 
uh, or they have a cabaret type of project. So um, obviously January is a tough time when it comes to events and stuff. Um, but as the as the year ramps up, um, we'll be featuring those. So um, certainly as a board, um, if there are things that you know about um, with your with your local organizations, um, please send them to me and then we can include that. So one page, just kind of quick blurbs, but uh, we're excited to see, and they're also relying on us to provide them with uh, local contacts. So I think it'll be great for the business community. Um, they gave us a list, if you don't mind. Um, a couple oh, concepts they want to share. Um, so they're looking at things like, for the cover, a multi-generational business, um, a minority or woman entrepreneur, an immigrant business owner, um, uh, let's see, health and wellness, um, a local artist. So during the year, they're going to try to find those those different categories and we'll be helping them with facilitating those contacts. So I'd um, like to see what happens over the first six months, but uh, I'm excited that their other products seem very good. So uh, I think it's a great addition to the town. Is, is it two people that you've been meeting with? Are those the owners of the, um, or that's the corporate parent? How does it work? I'm no, curious. they are, um, so it's, how do I describe it? They're not franchisees. They're employees of this NJ home and they're assigned to different communities each. So um, the gentleman I've been dealing with, I think he has four or five magazines that he and his team are responsible for. Great. Okay. Um, just some quick event updates. Uh, Premier Creative is going to have a lunch and learn on January 11th. It's going to be a training on Google. And um, this is the first of our 2024 business education programs. Premier Creative um, is a marketing agency that's been in town for about 30 years or so. So that'll be nice to start the year off. And the Google training is invaluable. So that'll be really helpful. Um, we are partnering again with Opportunity Project for Restaurant Week, and um, we're already off to a good start. We're going to have an advisory committee meeting slash Restaurant Week kickoff at Opportunity Project in January. It's going to be the 24th, um, so really looking forward to getting that rolling. And then I um, had a meeting, I think it was last week, with Nancy Dries and um, Trish, the head of nursing, uh, for the Melbourne school system, they are now doing a wellness week in May. And so they wanted to partner with us on that. And we kind of looked at all the different needs for not just the children, but staff and um, really feel we can fill it, all of that with the businesses in town. So we had our preliminary meeting. We're going to go back and meet again in January, put the structure together and then invite the businesses to either uh, provide um you know, programs or services, things like that. And it can range from um, self-care to um, fitness to relaxing techniques. I mean, there's just so much that goes into to wellness. So they're really excited about it. They're very grateful to be working with us. And I think it's a great thing for our businesses as well. So I'll be keeping you posted on that. Um, and I think that's it for me. I think it's <laughs> Any when, questions? I just have a question. Yeah. Girls' Night Out was in June. Yeah. So the wellness week in May can kind of. It may, yeah. Yeah. It kind of lead up or you can promote Girls' Night Out with using that, mm -hmm. that whole uh, um, launch. Well, the, the whole thing with this is it's not supposed to be a hard sell they're providing services right. it's an introduction to a business mm -hmm. you know they can give out coupons and other things but i think i think that'll be you know a start for people um and even with where you know ordering a healthy lunch stuff like that you know that's they're looking for those recommendations okay thank you thank you amanda uh, Jackie, do you have an advisory committee report? I do. So the advisory committee met on December 5th at 5.30 at Jack's Lobster Shack. Um, the holiday season discussion, obviously the, the preliminary, the Black Friday versus Small Business Saturday value. And the businesses present felt that Black Friday sales were much more robust than Small Business Saturday and that Small Business Saturday does not have the same cachet or style presence that it used to um, as a result of sort of Amex's less, less prominent role than it used to be. And they believe that things have changed in, since post-COVID and it is no longer the marketing force that it once was. Cyber Monday was a big sale day for them and um, they felt that that is something that we should 
um, perhaps be promoting or looking into um, moving forward. Um, the uh, consensus was that some businesses need to be more aggressive about their sales and marketing and create more exciting promotions with larger discounts, especially to compete with some of the large corporate chains that may be decreasing their Black Friday uh, incentives. Um, with respect to the carolers, stilt walkers, um, the question became for some of them, would it be a, it's a, it's a value proposition and would the money have been better spent on Instagram boosts and featuring more businesses online? That was something that was, you know, up for, up for th further discussion and to be discussed. Um, it was also felt that, um, they, that we should look at hiring more influencers to tag and market the business community. Businesses should think about staying open a little later on Small Business Saturday and also during the winter villages to capitalize on the additional foot traffic. Also was the, for discussion was considering doing a Melbourne Short Hill Small Business Saturday a digital sales program, perhaps once a quarter, to kind of give businesses another boost. Um, holiday decor for 2024, consensus also, is that the Township Explore should partner with other groups, the Chamber, Garden Club, uh, TBL, to increase participation and enhance decorations. Uh, someone also mentioned that the uh, article on other New Jersey towns featuring destinations, the you know Maplewood villages are always mentioned. Perhaps we should think about scaling up events uh, without additional spending. Perhaps you know spending some more money on Girls' Night Out, Restaurant Week. Should we consider um, food vendors at the winter villages? Um, you know, perhaps the igloos a little bit earlier. We have that was already discussed, and uh, some more shopping um, <laughs> um, as a as a tagline or something to entice more um, businesses to kind of tie into the um, the event. Um, other things for discussion that perhaps at the at the winter villages. Maybe we could write a guide uh, highlighting some of the participating men uh, merchants and special promotions that they may be having when now having this sheer volume and captive audience. So that was something that was kind of kicked around. With respect to 2024 planning, um, more marketing, more assistance, more reels, um, we discussed a mat doing a mass mailing to residents. Um, you know, do you know what's in your town? Um, a postcard, a resource guide. Um, talked about public art and the impact. Perhaps re uh, creating a QR code on Instagram so people will be compelled to kind of look at all the public art that we have. Um, sending an influencer list to the businesses to help them tie in. That was mentioned earlier by Amanda. Um, also mentioned was maybe we should consider some kind of downtown shuttle system to get people from place to place. Um, I don't, you know, maybe, I, I don't know, but if, if, if uh, everybody parks at the uh, Milburn train station to get to the Short Hills train station or something, it was just, other things that were thrown out there to kind of centralize. So to kind of get cars off the road and get people more walking and experiencing. Um, education classes to support businesses for 2024. These were the topics um, that were kicked around. Inflation concerns, uh, flood insurance, Instagram boosts, promotions, strategies, geotagging, which I'll let, let Steve or Amanda explain. Um, I already explained at that meeting. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, looking at uh, potentially more public art at mass transit locations, um, the train stations. And I also think that, um, just thinking out loud, that sort of bus area, the entrance to Taylor Park on Milburn Avenue, 
I think that whole spot is, you know, people are standing, there's a big crosswalk, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, you, it's a direct line to the library, to the train station. I think that that's, some, that's, a, a, that's a location that we could probably explore, no pun intended, um, and, uh, and maybe develop some kind of, you know, in, especially if in fact the township goes ahead with that, 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 that new entrance for Taylor Park on that side, maybe we can incorporate some more art, sculpture, wayfinding. I think there's a lot of opportunity at that, at that um, location. And that's pretty much it. <clears throat> Why don't you explain geotagging for, uh, for, the, sure. for the rest of us? Yeah. So, <coughs> pardon me. So on Instagram, uh, let's just focus on Instagram for now. Yeah. Um, you can tag a business specifically. You can also tag a location in general. So downtown Milburn, um, you, there is a hashtag Upper Milburn Avenue. There is a, so there's, there's different hashtags as well as geolocators. Uh, we try to use them as often as possible. And so there's also tagging of surrounding communities. So an example is, let's say um, you're in Springfield, New Jersey, and you type in hashtag Springfield. You want to see what's going on. We often will do Springfield Summit, uh, Maplewood, the Oranges, uh, we'll do Union County, Essex County, right? And so those hashtags go into the algorithm. And so you could be doing hashtag Springfield and an Explore Milburn event will come up, right? That's the whole point of engaging 55 separate communities, right? It's about integrating geography. And so um, there's, those are sort of the three primary ways is you can use the exact location point for a business. You can use a general like downtown Milburn or Morris Turnpike, whatever it may be. Um, or you can use those hashtags when you're doing a reel. And we use about a dozen of them when we do different reels um, so that you may not be looking for Milburn but at all. But if you're looking for something that has that hashtag and you're on the, the little search icon on Instagram, our material will come up. And so it's a good way to kind of cross pollinate uh, among geography since obviously this is a very dense part of the United States and people can easily go between municipalities. So we'll continue to do that. And I think, um, you know, as we, we talked about Jessica Chews as a, as a local influencer who's, who does really great content, um, you know, we're thinking about inviting her in to do a session with our businesses. Um, you know, I think you have to be competitive on social media today. You have to be competitive on Google. Um, we've talked about business modernization as a goal for 2024 and that's, that's a crucial piece of it. Steve, uh, how many influencers are in the uh, in our umbrella? Um, I'm building that. So the most I have are um, are food focused. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm working on getting more lifestyle ones. I say I probably have six to ten influencers that I've worked with. Um, so, um, but no, I'm looking for more, and and it also depends you know, whether the cost is worth it. Some influencers, I have to create everything for them, send it to them. They write their little whatever and they post it. Jessica shows up, does all the filming, does everything. I tell her what are, what we want to cover. She takes care of it. It's so, it's, you know, it's really a different package with different people, but some people have, you know, thousands and thousands of followers. So is it worth paying for that? And them? a lot of it is quality control too. Yeah. Um, so what we've looked at, this really started during restaurant week. That yeah. was the primary focus for us was to build our social media platform, yes. uh, using restaurant week, which we knew was a very visual platform. Um, and so we looked at, you know, how many real followers do they have? A lot of people will pay for followers or they have bots. Mm -hmm. And so a number could be severely inflated. Um, and so, you know, someone says they have 20,000 followers, but it's really only 5,000 people. Um, the other thing is, is regionality, right? So. We don't want someone that's necessarily a national influencer. That doesn't help us drive our local economy. Right. Um, and so we have to be discerning um, about, you know, the quality of those influencers. And that's where I think the hard work happens because, yeah. right. you know, there's plenty of influencers out there. It's are they real and are they serving the geography you want to serve? Range of price for these influencers? I mean, some people, if you feed them, that's their fee. <laughs> Other people, it's, we it, feed them. Yes. <laughs> you know, it could be anywhere from $200 to $1,500, depending on what so you're looking So Jessica was that would be a great session for the businesses to, to uh, have a session with some of these influencers that we've used. 
you know, just just expose to businesses because this is kind of it's kind of cutting edge. Yeah. Our lives. yeah. Well, put it this way, just from an ROI perspective. Yeah. We paid Jessica Chu's four hundred dollars, yeah. and she has forty thousand views oh on that reel. Yeah. Wow. So forty thousand people have seen the Holiday Villages featured. Right, that's a big deal. A DJ costs at minimum five hundred. Right, and you're not getting forty thousand people to see a DJ. So you know you start looking at comparable spending. Um, that's a great ROI. Yeah. It's a very. I mean, good she ROI. should be charging more, quite honestly. Don't but say that in public. Don't say that. <laughs> Hope she's not watching this meeting. No, no, we're, uh, we're, we're good. <laughs> My question: is, So when she charges a fee, it's per event. Is that how it works? No, it's it's so. per. So it's per. Um, it's the package. So normally with her, we'll get a reel, and then she'll do three or four stories. Um, and uh, I could get more. We could do two or three, you know, reels. It's just really what we want to pay for. But with her, I don't see a reason to do more than that. If I were, if I were to spend more money, I'd get another influencer to get their take and their following. Right, um, right to diversify. Exactly. Yeah. But I wouldn't duplicate either. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the big focus that will be happening with Restaurant Week this year is making sure that more of the restaurants are included. Um, and, and that we get more uh, influencers there as well. Do, do you know what the week is yet? Or is it yes. your way? Oh, you do. Great. It's March 17th to the 23rd. That's a uh, dark week at Paper Mill. Yeah. And it's St. Patrick's Day. Yes, it is. Wow. So, yeah. so more to come on that. Yeah. Great. Any other Questions? Yeah, just one more. Comment. Yeah. Back to the winter villages. Yeah. Uh, and I was there both nights or two. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. There for the but that's a great base to build off of. I mean, the energy, I mean, you know, I'm beating a dead horse, but we could do a lot with that mm -hmm. basic concept of winter villages. Cause I imagine little shopping kiosks cause it's holiday related, yeah. right. Or, or um, kind of copying what in the city where you, you go, it just feels like food trucks. I heard you say, but there's a lot that could that, be. We were talking about of. that at the conclusion of the second weekend. I said, you know, um, so we did a short hill station. I saw a lot of people with pizza boxes from uh, Brooklyn Pizza across the street. You know, had we maybe had more of an ability to engage those folks, maybe it's giving out free slices, right? And say, oh, if you like that, walk across the street and get a whole pie. Um, you know, there's, I think there's definitely opportunities for that to engage those, especially in the food side of it, because you have a lot of families, you got hungry little kids, um, you know, what's better than getting a quick slice of pizza and then say, okay, I'll run across the street and get dinner. Or, or um, bakeries. Yeah. Or bakeries, or bakeries. Um, you know, Jack's, which is now Jack's Surf and Turf, yes, hashtag rebrand, um, <laughs> because they are serving steaks. Um, you know, with, with the free soup, I mean, they had a line yeah, I, I know you all saw it. The line was like yes. um, seventy-five deep. Right. I mean, it was. But we positioned him so that the sponsors' tables were between him and Slurge, so that right. everyone got to be engaged. At some you know, point. we have a very repetitive um, commuting style in, in in New Jersey and in America, right? And there are people that just will never drive past Jacks. They just don't go that way wherever right. they're going, right? So it's a nice way to capture people who may live in this community but they just don't go down Upper Milburn Avenue, right? They go to Morris and wherever they go. And so it's a good way to, even you could be in that neighborhood and not even know that restaurant exists. Um, so, he, I mean, he must have served I thousands of don't. soups. I have to ask him. Yeah, so. Um, and as far as, you know, having um, businesses sell products and things, that's something that um, I think we can definitely explore, but I think it's more of a challenge because depending on the weather, people don't want to be outside. Very weather depends on the right, if, whether it's cold or if it's snowing. So um, uh, I think we could definitely have that, but to the extent of like a village we're used to in Philadelphia or New York. Yeah, in the beginning we're staffing. Eating. And staffing, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard, but um, I always think about the Taylor Park building, right? And I remember one of our first meetings, we kind of were thinking about how to create a winter village, a holiday village or something in Taylor Park to mm -hmm. leverage the building mm -hmm. to protect us a little bit from the weather uh, issue. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's feasible or whatever. <coughs> I don't so know. Like, I, I think we, we, we have some, some thinking to do about this logistically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll see from the schedule later that we're going to amend it a little bit. Um, but we've been talking about we could make it three weeks long. You know, if we moved it just to Short Hill Station, for instance, it could just sit there. And people could use the the igloos at you know at their leisure. So um, I think we have we have yeah. nine months or so to walk through this. But um, I think first off, 
there's no doubt it was a smashing success. Yeah. Um, financially, it was great for us. Yeah. Um, social media wise, it was probably the best thing we've done ever. Yeah. Um, and so I think the sky's the limit with it. And we're just going to continue to be creative. Thank you, Jack, for your uh, presentation too. Uh, Steve, you're up. Okay, I will. Uh, I have a long list, but I hope to be very quick about it. Um, parking committee. So um, until Tim gets up to speed, I will be handling the business administrator's normal report. Um, so parking committee. Um, there was an adoption of a ordinance amendment that had, Alex had brought up at the last meeting. Um, at, at the, I'm sorry, it will be adopted December 19th. Um, so Tuesday. It is to create a quarterly business parking permit. Um, the idea is that we have a lot of temporary workers, uh, especially in the downtown. They do not buy the annual passes because they're not necessarily expecting to work the entire year. So in order to get them to buy it and comply, um, we have reduced that down to a quarterly instead of an annual and semi-annual. Um, so uh, the expectation of the township committee will approve that on Tuesday. Um, in 2024, it will come in front of the Township Committee as well to create an employee parking deck incentive. Um, so we're still working through the details on that, but the idea would be that there would be a reduced cost to buy the parking pass if you're an employee and you park in the deck. The whole goal is obviously get people to stop parking in the streets and stop parking in municipal lots, which we want for shoppers and workers, uh, office workers especially. So there's a lot of people that could walk um, from the parking deck, perhaps a financial incentive would um, help them do that. So uh, that will be up for discussion in 2024. And then before the end of the year, Alex and I have been working with Public Works on a project um, to uh, try to continue to reduce the uh, number of delivery drivers, especially on Milburn Avenue. And so we are creating um, delivery driver parking or waiting space on Essex Street, uh, where the, Annie, the former Annie says is. Um, there's a bunch of unused parking over there. There's just, the building density is very low. So um, we've got probably 15 spaces or so. And so we're gonna be, we have signage that's been produced and it's gonna go out imminently. Um, and so it'll be starting near the Milburn Deli. It will say delivery drivers, parking is follow signs. Um, there'll be a sign where um, Milburn and Essex meet. Um, and then people will go around the curve and they will be able to park um, and we, the police won't chase them or anything um, because they just sit and wait for orders. Um, and so we get them off the street, we get them to an area that's relatively unused. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how that works. But the signage has been developed and uh, it'll probably be going in by the end of the year. Any questions? Okay. Uh, speaking of Essex Street, uh, Collier's Engineering has been working on a two-way conversion project, which we've talked about um, at various times during the year. On November 30th, there was a public meeting uh, in this room to discuss the initial steps or the, the initial uh, report. Uh, overall, it seemed like the meeting went uh, pretty well and, and there was some really robust discussion from residents. I think whenever you're talking about a major traffic transformation like that, there's stuff that just invariably gets missed. And so the residents provide a lot of good feedback. Um, a week later, uh, the committee that is uh, for the Essex Street Two-Way, which I serve on, um, met with Colliers. We made uh, we discussed some of the comments from that public meeting. Um, I had a couple of issues that I was concerned with, including um, left turns off of Old Short Hills Road um, into the parking lot where the clock tower is and the paper mill studios. Um, how would that function? We don't want people to necessarily have to make a left onto Essex just to go into that lot. We can get them off Old Short Hills before they even get to the intersection. That would help. Um, left turn controls on Essex. You have an entrance into the parking lot as well as the parking deck. Um, so we're gonna need to determine are those stop signs? Are those no left turns? Is that a traffic light? There's a crosswalk there, as you all know, that needs to be realigned as part of this. The crosswalk doesn't actually go to where it's supposed to go. Um, so that's gonna be a, a piece of it. I also brought up emergency services impacts. Um, you know, we don't know what a realignment will look like for uh, emergency <coughs> services vehicles. Um, and then consideration of whether, whether it's Main Street or Town Hall Plaza that may be potentially used as a pedestrian space. Um, wanna see uh, if there's any modeling or potential impact um, you know, now that we may have a new traffic flow on Essex Street, how would, for instance, closing down Town Hall Plaza work? So um, 
Our next meeting as a committee is on January 11th, and then Alex expects that sometime in early February, there'll be a public session to bring back the results of all those comments from the public and the committee. Steve, what's the main argument to change it to two-way? I, I think the main issue is that we have a, we, we don't have vehicular redundancy, right? Which is always the key in traffic planning. You can go one way on Milburn, and one way on Essex. Um, and then, you know, there's, what it creates is a bunch of, of unnecessary loops for cars, right? Um, and so if we had a two-way, uh, Essex Street would be a much more uh, accessible and, and probably better flowing road. And I think that would take a lot of the stress off of Milburn Ave, um, could potentially remove some of the stress on Old Shore Hills Road. Um, and so I think there's other challenges that go into it. You know, we, I think we need to look at, um, you know, right turn on red prohibitions in the town. Um, there's some issues there that, you know, there's pedestrian safety, there's also vehicular circulation, there has to be a happy medium. So I think the Essex Street two-way conversion is probably the logical starting point for improving some of the circulation issues that we have in the town. I think there's no doubt, you know, when you have basically just a loop, I mean, that's what we have. It's, it's, it's just a really inefficient way of moving vehicles. So Milburn Avenue would remain one way and Essex would be two-way? Correct. That, is that the, the phase one? There, there's been a conversation about making Milburn two-way, uh, but this this study is not at that point. Mm -hmm. In other words, they'd see how this goes first. Yeah. Okay. And I think if, if you look at it from a traffic perspective, Essex is the best one to consider the two-way. Um, it just, it, it lends itself better to two-way traffic for a whole host of reasons that Milburn does. Okay, so with that, um, I also have a couple of things I just want to bring you guys up to speed on. So we haven't talked about it in a while, um, but liquor license reform um, was something that we've discussed quite a bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, Governor Murphy um, issued a conditional veto at the end of November on a bill that was sent to him. Um, the conditional veto is that he felt that it was not necessarily um, as liberal as he would hope, um, and there was a couple of things missing. So actually, um, for those that are in favor of, of liquor license reform, which most um, economic development groups are, uh, it's actually, I think, a good sign. I think the governor is willing to listen, and he's, uh, he wants even more um, expansion. So it's really focused on craft breweries and wineries, as well as restaurants. Um, but uh, there, there's sort of two main points of it. The first is that um, we have what are called pocket licenses in New Jersey. So those are inactive licenses that people own. So you own it, but no one's actually using it. The estimate there's about 1,400 of these statewide. And so the that was the main gist of the governor's conditional veto, which was to uh, try to figure out a system where you no know, people can't just hold on to them. They have to be recirculated. There's a question about allocation, right? So if they go back into the pool, how are they allocated? That's for the legislature to determine, but I think it's very important to have, we have 1,400 uh, basically ghost licenses. It doesn't help anybody. Um, the second item, and this was actually uh, proposed originally by John McKeon, our assemblyman, uh, soon to be senator from this district, which was um, a mall carve out. Um, so right now we have five licenses that are at the mall. Um, so that counts towards our total as a municipality. So the idea would be that you could take, for instance, those five licenses, and duplicate them for businesses in the town. They wouldn't lose those licenses, but we would get five more. Um, there's some debate right now in the legislature as to whether it would be based on um, X amount of licenses per square foot of the mall, whether it's taking the number of licenses that are in the mall and duplicating it. But I think from a legislative perspective, the state is close to trying to figure out what I think is, is a problem, right? Um, you know, the, the small, uh, mom and pop restaurants are competing for liquor licenses with major corporations that are based in, in malls. Um, we want them to certainly have the licenses, but it shouldn't be at the deficit of the others. So um, I'm involved in a number of, of statewide discussions on liquor license reform. And I think for the first time in a while, there's some good momentum happening. So um, I think the conditional veto is a good thing. It means that uh, at least there's a conversation going on. Um, so more to, more to hear on that. Um, I also included in your packets an article that was in NorthJersey.com. I thought it was interesting. Um, I, I hear constantly, we have too many nail salons, too many restaurants, but we don't have enough traditional stores, whatever that means. So the article talks about um, why are there more services than boutiques? I think what's great about Milburn is that we do have a really nice mix. We do have a lot of boutiques. Um, we have a lot of, you know, we talked about a camera store. And, you know, there's a, there's a, it's a pretty diverse business community. But the argument that's made in this article is that, 
you know, the more services you can get, the better that is to support boutiques. Those services are your new de facto anchors, right? So what used to be the anchor stores in a downtown are long gone. They've either moved to shopping malls or they've just been replaced by Amazons. But there's things, you know, the pet groomer, the tutoring business, the yoga studio, the dance studio, those are reliable anchors because people are going to them on a regular basis. They then feed into the restaurants, they feed into the bakeries, they feed into the boutiques. Um, and so I, I've always felt that that was a bit of a dismissive approach to um, economic development, that we have just too many nail salons or too many barber shops. Um, but when you think of it in a more, in a larger sense, which this article does, you know, that reliability of customers spins off into some of those non-essential, right? Um, you have to get your hair cut once in a while. You don't always have to buy a pocketbook. Um, but if we can get the guy that gets, you know, the woman that gets her hair cut decides to walk the streets and grab a cup of coffee and buy the pocketbook and buy the school book, you know, that's a really symbiotic way of, of running a community. So um, just some food for thought. It's in your packets, but I thought it was just an interesting article to share with you guys, given what we do. Um, moving on to the 2023 success tracker. I will be exceptionally brief. Um, business advocacy was great. We did uh, 14 different um, education programs or publications for businesses. We did seven mix. We had 21 events this year. Um, seven mixers, eight community driven events and six signature events of which the new ones were restaurant week, fall into Milburn. Uh, we did a chalk takeover in August, uh, which was a lot of fun for kids at uh, Main Street Pedestrian Mall. And we did Biz for Kids. And then uh, five public art projects, um, as well as uh, some other things that I'll talk about in our annual report. So overall, I think it was a really terrific year and uh, we did a lot of new stuff, which we're very excited about and we're gonna repeat most of what we did. So with that, I would like to briefly go through, and I promise you this will be shorter than most of my presentation, um, our annual reports. So would you like to that up? We didn't play your, uh, your videos. That's okay. So every year we, uh, we issue an annual report. Um, tonight, this is the the final-ish draft. Um, so certainly if anybody has any comments or additions they'd like, or if their photo is in it and they would like that photo deleted, I understand that too. Um, but uh, this will eventually go to the township committee, uh, which we're required in our ordinance to present to them. And then you'll all get a bound copy as well. Um, so the annual report, we had a lot of smiling faces. Next page, please. A message from our outgoing chairman. Um, some of the big projects this year was the installation of the Upper Milburn Avenue parking and welcome signs, which you see in that top circle. Um, the public art initiative, which was uh, through funding from Essex County. This is the first year we did that. Um, I mentioned some of the new events and then uh, the reduction in the SID vacancy from uh, down to 3%. So we hit a record low there. And thank you, Michael, for putting together that letter for us. Um, very basic organizational overview, since everybody in the room knows what we do. 501c3 nonprofit SID, we have five distinct commercial areas, 160 assessed properties, and uh, just about 500 businesses. Next, please. The, that's a map of the district, uh, as well as our four core tenants, streetscaping and placemaking, events, music, and marketing, uh, business assistance, and then, of course, our operations and governance. So 2023 in review, um, we created the Milburn Oasis as uh, we called it, which is in the courtyard space um, between here and the standard. Um, that's public space that we've uh, enlivened with, uh, with seating. Uh, we completed two rounds of plantings uh, for over 30 planters that we maintain. Uh, we executed nearly 25 full decor installations, if you've seen them with the gourds and the pumpkins and the hay. And then we also worked with the Milburn Climate Action Group, and we did uh, six uh, native plant planters up by Short Hill Station. So that was the first time we did that. And then the list of uh, all of our different public art projects, including on the right, um, we have four parking kiosks in the downtown uh, where Amanda developed the vinyls and then installed them by hand. Um, so that was a really exciting project that we're very pleased with as part of our public art. You can proceed. Just some photos of the different plantings, uh, the oasis, uh, some of the public art displays. Um, that's the Futter building on the top right. Those were photos that were taken by the owner of Goldberg's. 
Um, so we're very excited about that. We love that one. Um, underneath that is the former uh, Priscilla's Bridal on Upper Milburn Avenue. Uh, we did mandalas across all the large windows and then um, also the, uh, the artwork that was done in the Milburn Art Alley this year uh, by a Jersey City based uh, graffiti artist who I just think, I think it's a showstopper. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. Then events, music and marketing. Um, so we did Lunar New Year, we did Founding Day. Um, next year is the 150th anniversary of Taylor Park. Uh, and believe it or not, I actually had a conversation already with the rec department about what they want to do. Um, so we'll be integrating that together. Uh, we had mixers and networking events at the Ethical Mattress, The Shade Place, um, Citizens Bank, Artist Loft Hair Studio, New Moody Baby, as well as Her MD. So tons of new businesses moving in. Um, signature events, we mentioned Restaurant Week, Girls Night Out. Um, that was the Chalk Takeover event. That was with uh, Emily from Green Door Studio. She went out and actually taped up the streets so the kids could fill in um, the, the, the spaces. And then she removed the tape and it became a giant chalk mural. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Some photos from restaurant week. Um, so go on. Um, some photos from founding day as well as see the Sunday, which Jackie played a, a huge role in planning. The pedestrian mall, we had our anniversary party uh, on Upper Milburn Avenue. There's a photo of some folks um, over at Tonino's and uh, some of the live music. These are some of the uh, marketing, uh, some of the, uh, I should say, ribbon cuttings, uh, Game Changer, Her MD, New Mooney, um, Shade Place, our anniversary party with our, our chairman speaking to the crowd. Um, Girls Night Out. Uh, so we had some, some great photos from that. I think that was a, a terrific event this year. We didn't get rained out like the year prior. So we're looking forward to early June again of next year. We just had smoke from Canada. We had smoke from Canada, which is kind of weird. <laughs> Um, these are some of the shots from the Winter Villages, as well as Small Business Saturday. Some more of those. Oh, I used the pun. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, that's embarrassing. Um, so business assistance, as I mentioned, I serve on the Essex Street Two-Way Committee, as well as the Township Development Review Committee um, and the Parking Ad Hoc Committee. Um, we did so, uh, small business seminars on search engine optimization as well as social media, which we will continue to do. Uh, we did a five part series with the Union County EDC on financial literacy for small businesses. Um, you guys remember the NJEDA e-commerce program that does free websites. So we had a seminar on that. Um, we did a police uh, safety training about a month and a half ago with businesses. And then Amanda did 12 in-person social media trainings for folks that asked her to come over and help them. Um, and then, uh, as, as she mentioned, we developed a partnership with the Milburn Short Hills Magazine. So we'll see how that uh, bears out in 2024. And the photo on the left is actually time sensitive because that is a group called America's Best Restaurants. They are a Facebook television show that goes around the country. They featured Goldberg's and Goldberg's, I believe, tomorrow or the day after or check this weekend goldberg's will have its full episode up on facebook so if you follow them on facebook the full episode will be there i got to hang out with them during the day as they were filming it it was really terrific um so we'll go on to the next slide new businesses new locations um tons so game changer her md the shade place sweet tooth pediatric dentistry new mooney baby Studio 260 Hair Salon, T-Boy Chic Living, which if you haven't been inside is absolutely gorgeous. It's the old camera shop um, next to Coffee Mill Roasters across from the Standard. Uh, the Ethical Mattress and uh, Viv Infusions, just to name a few. And then as of this week, Sushi Zero is also open. So if you have not had a chance, that is um, right next to the entrance of Taylor Park, your bunchers. Um, there'll be a nice reel that comes out tomorrow because I went there this evening and took some photos. Um, What's the name of the restaurant? Sushi Zero. It used to be, um, no, then it was, yeah, I can't remember the name, but they subdivided it. So it's Chinese on one side and uh, sushi on the other. Um, we've had some anticipated new businesses. So again, the good news is we can move Sushi Zero to the open. Um, Gold Medal Gymnastics Center is really, we're really excited about that. That's coming to the old YB Fitness. Um, so that's going to be a gymnastics center as well as a swim school. Uh, so we've been working with, um, the Mandelbaums through the owner of that property to walk them through the, the development process. It's a, it's a huge space. It's a complicated project, but um, I've, I've already spoken to the, the reps from those businesses and 
Um, I think a gymnastics school and a swim school on Morris Turnpike is going to be terrific. Curious Kids um, is going to be opening it uh, right across on Spring Street here. Uh, JD Fitness has two operations. They're leaving one of them. Um, and so Curious Kids is going to be taking that space. And they've got terrific early uh, childhood education programs. Sugaring NYC is also going to be opening on uh, where the old President's Club was after they moved a little bit closer to downtown. So a bunch of stuff going on um, that we expect for 2024. Um, and then just uh, some trends. You've seen increases in shopper diversity, landlord engagement, outer district occupancy, and just the regional prominence of the organization. And um, we're going to be focusing, as we said, capturing new businesses, modernizing businesses. Uh, we're involved, obviously, with traffic management, um, parking, um, circulation innovation. One thing that Alex and I are going to focus on this year is uh, e-bikes and e-scooters. Um, I, I was at a conference recently where we were talking about transit oriented development, but from the perspective of how do people get from apartments that aren't necessarily within walking distance to a transit hub. Um, and so, you know, you look at Annie says, I think a lot of people are or Wells Fargo. Those people may be getting on the train, but maybe they're taking an e-scooter or an e-bike, right? It's not far enough to drive, but it's also not close enough to walk. But how do we deal with that infrastructure? How do we make sure those bikes are safe? Charging stations, even battery storage, right? Battery storage for those lithium batteries can be very dangerous in a multi-unit building. So um, changing face of the economy, changing face of society, we as a city need to be at the cutting edge of that. So that's why our ongoing education is, is important. Um, new services, we're talking about takeovers like character days, video game days, um, live music at Town Hall Plaza that we're gonna try this year. Um, certainly business modernization, as I mentioned, we're talking about um, new campaigns as well, like Design a Day, a tour of the town. Um, Amanda had one, Get Beach Ready. You know, uh, where do you get your tan? Where do you get your, your bathing suit? Where do you get your beach chair? All that kind of stuff. Um, the, and, uh, the flood insurance and inflation survival, I think, will be important. Um, I'd like to engage more with NJEDA. Um, they're the main grant uh, provider in the state. I think a lot of our businesses could benefit from, from understanding their programs. So we'll be working with them. Um, and then the, we haven't talked about it in a while, but we do have money in the budget for that street cleaning pilot program um, that the town gave us. So we're looking forward to starting to clean the streets in, in the spring and fall, uh, spring and summer, I should say. Was that fast enough, Mike? Oh. All right. Um, so we do have a little bit of business to take care of after that, which is the adoption of our 2024 schedule. So you have that in your packets as attachment seven. So um, we have a monthly board meeting. It's usually around or so the 15th of the month, depending on how, uh, how the month falls. We have July and August off as we've done for the last two years. Um, so you see the schedule there. The only deviation would be that the October 17th meeting starts at 5.30 as opposed to 6.30. We have four advisory committee meetings. Um, Amanda already mentioned the one that's gonna be on January 24th, that opportunity project. And then we have a list of all of our, of our events. Um, the Main Street Pedestrian Mall closure, um, we have it there. We don't know whether that'll be approved by the Township Committee or not, or in what incarnation that will be. So um, that is a TBD. Um, we do have to have a continued discussion about the holiday kickoff weekends of, of Black Friday, as, as Jackie talked about. So um, we have those dates reserved, but that's, that's a little bit uh, to decide. And then uh, what we decided with the Winter Villages is four days is a lot of work. Um, so what we're going to do is December 7th with a rain date of the 8th and December 14th with a rain day of the 15th. Um, and everything here to Jackie's pleasure will have a rain date because she, nobody loves a rain date like my friend. Jackie. Um, so with that, I also put in the holidays uh, just in case there was any con questions, but I think the, the, the calendar we have right now avoids any major holiday conflict. So um, with your approval, uh, we can... Uh, move forward with this and then we can publish it in the item as required. We can, do you want to take action now or wait till? I will need your action now. Okay. Yes, because this has to go in before January 1st. So let's, uh, can I have a motion to adopt the 2024 uh, schedule? So second. Second. Okay. Move over in a second. We have a roll call, please. Uh, sure. Alexa is not here. Tracy Casper being yes. Michael Parlebeck, yes. yes. Fanet Romano, yes. Ashley is not here. Stephen Weiner, yes. Okay. Moved. I will take care of it. Wonderful.
Okay. Uh, all right. Thanks, Steve. That was charmful. <laughs> Uh, Barry, Barry. Public comments. Uh, when invited to speak, come to the lectern, state your name, speak into the microphone so that your comments can be understood and recorded. If you have a prepared statement, please send that to Tracy at ExploreMilburnShortHills.org. Uh, speakers, I ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. If you are joining us via Zoom or phone, you'll also have an opportunity to speak and same three minutes applies. Uh, all comments, please direct to the chair. And okay, this is your first go. Let's go with who's on uh, who's on line for us, if anybody. Good evening, Harry Urso, 514 Milburn Avenue. Um, considering that the committee woman uh, Romano sits on this board as a voting liaison for the uh, town council, uh, I would ask the following. Since the last SID meeting, one could ask, will the township continue to litigate or mediate this upcoming year? Secondly, can you explain why the amended bylaws on the agenda have not been introduced to the TC to date? What is the delay? And based on those bylaws, I would ask respectfully, why is Ms. Lieberberg sitting amongst the board of trustees considering she is not listed as a member. Um, also, um, has there been an analysis provided to the TC for the 33 supporting letters presented during the 2024 budget pre presentation to date? I did Oprah um, a list of events. Um, the executive director mentioned events. Um, in that Oprah response from Mr. Cooper, he made it, he stated something as if it's not available or so I, I'm assuming from the existence from 2020, there's no log or information on events where they were held. And also, can you please clarify the sponsored s'mores um, by, from Splurge? It was stated Metropolitan or was it Stone Properties? So it was mentioned Metropolitan, but I'm not sure. So if you can clarify that, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Have a nice holiday. Mr. Palavecchio, it was great getting to know you. Thank you. Anything you want to tick off there, Steve? Uh, sure. Um, Garden Homes and the Metropolitan were the event sponsor, and the S'mores sponsor was um, the Splurge Bakery. Uh, Stone Properties uh, was not involved in the event. And any of those... Uh, um, Oprah requests will certainly be responded to if they haven't been. Uh, we are up to date with all Oprah requests and uh, Mr. Cooper responded, I believe, on Monday to uh, Ms. Urso's request and provided her with an answer. Thank you. Um, okay. Anybody else on for us, Tim? Okay. Yes, hi, good evening. Jean Pasternak. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question for Mr. Grillo based on your presentation, your annual um, you know, assessment. Is it, I've asked this so many times and I still really don't feel very clear about it. Is there any quantifying of the bottom line impact of all these events that you described to the businesses in the five districts? Is there any way to break that down by district? And it, have you made any attempt to try and find out what impact um, explore Melbourne has had with your events and with your support to our businesses. It's quantifiable, not not just the the qualitative measure, but the quantitative measurement of the impact. Um, and then I guess the other question I have is, um, what will you do if uh, there's no Main Street closure? And do you have have you made any alternative? plan B arrangements or thoughts about what, what would happen? Are there other uh, areas of, of town where you've considered or thought about? I think I've heard a couple of different things mentioned along the way this year, but I just wondered if you have any specific thoughts on that. And then um, I just wanted to thank um, Mr. Parlavecchio for his time and energy serving the board. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, Steve, what do we have? Sure. Um, 
I think in terms of quantifiable uh, impact, it really depends on the business, right? So a, a retail business versus a restaurant versus a, you know, a, a child's daycare, like Curious Kids, they're all going to have uh, different needs, different payoffs. Um, so I, I don't think I can answer that question uh, in one succinct answer. Uh, it depends on, on the business. Um, in terms of the Main Street closure, um, we have had conversations about whether we can use the Town Hall Plaza, which is adjacent to this building. Uh, we used it uh, during um, fall into Milburn Short Hills. We used that as a test case. We wanted to see how the layout would be. Um, physically, the space works. I think there's a real question as to whether people will find the experience as rewarding as it is on Main Street. Uh, Main Street has overhead illumination. Um, it was designed specifically for this use when Complete Streets was done. Um, and of course, it has the restaurants um, that Town Hall Plaza does not have. So um, there's certainly pros and cons. And I think if we don't have the Main Street closure and it does get relocated to Town Hall Plaza, uh, we'll, we'll do the best we can. But I don't, I don't necessarily think it's going to be quite as strong of a product. Thank you. Tim, anybody else online? Okay, anybody in, in the room, please come on up. Um, good evening, my name is Jeffrey Fell, resident in the poet section. First to Mr. Uh, Hoffman, welcome. You're gonna see my face often. They probably told you that when you walked in, they showed you the file about the Bear Properties litigation. Um, Mr. Parlovecki, I really wanna thank you for your effort because there have been reforms, you know, as we started, we focus back as to the first meeting in September 2020. Then I showed up for the first time in December 2020. And you said, and I talked about um, willful blindness and ostrich putting your head in the sand. And you said you were going to use it on a Christmas card. You never told me if you ever actually did to do that. Um, one point I have really had to make, what's going to happen in 2024? I think we're going to have mediation at the end of May as to an issue that's been festering over this entity, the validity under state law of the appointed expanded uh, five district SID. The reason I raise that, uh, even though Mr. Cooper's not here, there was an opinion that came out of the state Supreme Court today talking about ultra virus activities of governmental entities. And that's really what the issue is about statutory interpretation. In addition, on Tuesday, after I appeared to watch the oral arguments, you know, where various municipalities are trying to compel the governor to appoint and react COA, the state controller issued a very harsh report about Union County. And I urge you all to read that report because he talks about difference about ordinances, resolutions, and transparency and robust informed civic participation. And this goes back to the issues of what occurred in August of 2000. 20 and we'll be revisiting that this year. Um, I think I want to research certain things. There are certain questions that you made propose amendments to your bylaws. The question we have never heard is what Ms. Urso said, why that has not been presented to the TC on the agenda now, because that affects some of the things you might be doing later this evening. Um, also at the last TC meeting, there was a walk-in discussion about 33 supporting letters. No one's ever done an analysis of where they came from, what districts and things like that. I'm really surprised because I've been coming up here, you all know I'm an attorney, but no one ever talked about my experience running a business, a family owned business for 25 years in Orange. And there's always a tension that we really never discussed. The tension between having a chamber of commerce and a, and a voluntary chamber of commerce where the membership is voluntarily or a SID which is an involuntary membership because you get assessed. And I think you really have to start focusing on what this town wants to do. You really have to talk to businesses. Do you want to have a chamber or you have a SID? They're mutually really, in my experience, have been mutually exclusive. And I think that's the kind of discussion you should have. And I, and I offer my experience and expertise in the future. Again, Mr. thank you, Mr. Parlovecki. I know as the buzzer goes off. Thank you. Hello, Vicki Powell, 38 year um, business owner in downtown Milburn. Um, Michael, we're sad to see you leave. You did an awesome job. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, mention, Mr. Feld mentioned Chambers and SIDS. Well, the Milburn Chamber is a paid organization. It's, a, it's an organization that any other town 
business can join. So it doesn't benefit the businesses per se in Milburn Short Hills because they can be, you know, five hairdressers from Summit or five, you know, barbershops from Westfield can be in part in Milburn Chamber. And if the Milburn Chamber has an or uh, 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 an event, their members can come. So it's a conflict of interest because when you're trying to bring business to the businesses in town, you don't want to bring them from other towns. So that's why the SID is beneficial to us because it helps the organizations, um, it, the businesses. In regards to the letters, I know five of my neighbors in the downtown wrote uh, in support of the organization. And like I always say when I come up here, you always hear the negative, but there is a lot of us that support the organization, are happy that you're here. And, I, yeah, and I'm sure you'll be seeing them on Tuesday also, because we believe in the mission and what you guys are all doing for us. And we thank you. Um, Jackie, in regards to the advisory committee, I'd be curious, how many of the advisory committee members are retail businesses? Not because I, some of the stuff that they're saying about small business Saturday, not necessarily doing it as a small business Saturday, but I think another way to do it because that weekend is a very busy weekend because Thanksgiving is a holiday for everyone. Everyone celebrates it. So you get a lot of families coming back to the area so ne not necessarily doing like a small business Saturday, but maybe a holiday walk or something that can capitalize it because every other town was bustling and, and were doing some had had the carriage rides and Maplewood had the whatever they had. But I think we should change it around and do something different than small business Saturday. But I think not doing everything digital, I, not everyone does Black Friday, not everyone does Cyber Tuesday. So I think we need to do something a little bit different than the than the small business Saturday, but something that is in the districts. I think that I I don't think they're I'd be curious that, you know, I like the committee and I and it's nice that they give you the feedback, but it would be nice if you can maybe send a survey out to the uh, the other people and find out what the other um, business owners are thinking, because I think you you know, that's just a limited amount of people. I think you need to do a little bit broader on that kind of stuff because I think other people would have opinions on that also. But thank you all for a great year. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just want to say, I think there's probably been more conversation and more ideas about the Small Business Saturday weekend than anything else. Um, and so we're absolutely in lockstep with Vicki. You know, we, we just got to keep playing around and trying to get ideas, but um, it's a changing holiday as, as the economy has changed and we're, we're just going to continue to be creative about it. Anyone Vicky, else? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Vicki, do you think it would be um, some kind of marketing event that's going to say shop small business Milburn? You know, before you get into that, I just want to oh, finish up our okay. public comments before we get into yeah, it back and ahead. forth. Anybody else for public comment? It's not so. <laughs> just, just to close well, that, that out. Just to close <laughs> that out. Or I, I, I can, I, we can discuss it offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, okay. Okay. Sorry about that, Jack. I just wanted to I close that off and then. Okay. Uh, we do have an executive session. We don't have any action to be taken after executive session. So we will come, come back out and adjourn. You're welcome to stick around. But. That's all that's happening. And so. everyone, have a great Thank holiday. You. Same Same to you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I shake your hand, Mr. Carla Vicky. I'm with you to us. Why not? Come on. If LBJ would always have a drink or, you know, and tip her on here. You can sign up. Yes, this is what kind of frustrated. I got his signature, but frustrated carpets are this. Oh, yeah. Oh, Thanks, Steve. No, why don't we just read that? No, we're, we're, we have what a, we're a motion, for, motion to go into executive session. For the discussion of personnel matters, specifically board appointment discussion and potential recommendations to the township committee. I have a motion to go into executive session. And second, please. Motion. Motion. Second. Second for Annette. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you.
Don't move. Motion. That <laughs> <laughs> my last one was not legitimate. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Real loud. 